Hi everyone, welcome back to the Crypto Carlos Fandango YouTube channel. Now you've probably seen that if you've watched most of my videos, I am a lover of buying second-hand used hardware. I hardly buy anything um, from new, um, maybe apart from the odd component that I need to complete a project. Um, and in this box we have something that is um, come from a decommissioned data centre, also used. Um, I got it for a, what I would consider a very good price, very good price, um, and I'll tell you that in a little while. Uh, but inside this box we have the Detap DS4246 24 bay um, disc shelf, and complete with uh, two, uh, I believe, 540 PSUs, we'll confirm that, and um, two IOM6 controllers. Um, no disc drives at all, just the empty shelf. Um, got this from a reputable um, eBay seller so I'm hoping that it's going to be in good condition so we'll open the box and see what's inside. Before I completely unwrap it, kudos out to System Supply Industries Limited UK who sent this to me packaging was really well done there was industrial strength bubble wrap around this in the cardboard box and it's a good job as well because the DPD driver who delivered it dropped it onto the tarmac as soon as he got it out of the van and there were a couple of holes in the box that sort of suggested that it had had a rough time on its journey but look at this polystyrene casing as well they put around it fragile stickers all over the box brilliant I'm you know it's just reached me in brilliant condition so let's get the, this all off and have a look at what we've got here well, I'm really pleased with how this is looking. I've left the foam on the bottom for a moment, um, just so it doesn't scratch the table. It is a very heavy unit with the power supplies and the ion controllers um, fitted in. Um, even heavier once it's fully populated with uh, drives, but you can see we've got 24 caddies, so it come with all of those, which I did check before I purchased it, because uh, it didn't actually say in the listing. It only mentioned the power supplies and the IOM controllers and the, the shelf. So, you know, be careful when you're buying one of these, make sure that you do get all the disc trays, because they are expensive to buy on their own, funny enough. But uh, they're very easy to get in and out. Um, I still have some investigation to do to see what sort of drives I'm going to get for these. As I say, I'm hoping... That's not right, let's try that again. It's a bit of a snug fit. Very snug fit. I think it's because of a screw, maybe. These have got screws in them. There we go. Come on, in you go. That's it. That's better. So, yeah, very snug fit, but they do go in 24 of those. And then, as I said, round the back, if we just spin that round, it came with two power supplies. Only two required to run this unit with um, drives in. If we're just going to um, link it to a uh, HBA board in a PC um, via these connectors here, um, 540 watt, I believe. I've not checked yet. Um, and more importantly, blanking plates for the the two that are missing, and also for the two IOM slots that are missing, because you can have four of those in there as well. Um, and that helps, as Digital Spaceport explained on his video, with um, air circulation. So you need to make sure these are covered in these spare units. Now the power supply is very easy to take in and out. As you can see, they just slot in. And if you're running it off of two, it's top left and bottom right from the rear view. And you just let those into place. Like that. Okay, I'm not going to take one of these out because I've never taken one of these out before and I'm not sure how you go about it. It looks like you just... No, that's a blanking plate. It must be... must be some way of pulling those out, but no need to at this stage. So, the next thing I'm going to do is test it. Um, I'm going to try and get hold of a 18 terabyte SAS drive, just one, and then I'll fire that up with this. Um, by the right connectors. I've downloaded some information off of the NetApp website, some um, PDF documents that should tell you exactly 
how to connect these um, controllers up to your HBA board um, and you can daisy chain these units as well link them up via these connectors um, so I'll purchase those um, cables that I need and I'll also purchase the board I need for the PC um, and then we'll fire this up with one disc in and we'll see if we can get it to talk to Windows um, and recognize that disc um, I'm not sure if anybody does know in the comments whether you can add drives to this very easily um, and start using it immediately with you know the small amount of drives you have or whether you have to fully populate it with discs right from the outset um, not entirely sure because um, the video that I watched on Digital Spaceport channel um, he fully populated all the drive base straight off the bat with 18 terabyte drives um, but I'm obviously not going to be able to do that I'm going to have to buy them bit by bit as and when funds are available so it would be good if I can just keep adding to it and you know um, maybe do some configuration in Windows to say right there's a new drive in there to add to the shared folder or whatever um, that, um, that I'm either plotting to or reading from from the uh, Cheer Client software. So um, that's pretty much it for this video. It was going to be short and sweet, just an unboxing to look at the unit, but as you can see, very tidy unit, and I'll tell you the price I paid for that now because I think it's quite amazing. I've seen these going online fully populated with two or four terabyte drives, and we're talking three or four thousand pounds um, for units like this. Um, bare bones like this, well, well I say bare bones, but it's got everything you need to start really, apart from the drives. I paid £225. I actually negotiated it down from £250. So I think I've got a bargain there and it's going to be a good little project to get this up and running. Not sure where I'm going to put it yet. It's a bit smaller than I thought, so it may fit in a, a similar data cabinet to what I already have, but I might buy a new one, a slightly taller one, maybe, I don't know, 22 unit or something um, to get this in. And my ready nas and my you know redo my switch and all that in a brand new cabinet um, and make sure I've got growth for maybe another couple of these in there as well. So hope you like that. Um, watch this space to see what I do with this. I will you know make further videos as I do bits and pieces with it and show you how it works and how I, I'm configuring it. It's the next stage for me, moving away from the ready nas 2100 units I've got and the USB 3 drives that I've got currently housing chia plots um, got to start looking at how to get bigger and this was the logical step after I've done a lot of research and a lot of investigation um, so hopefully the unit's not going to be too noisy I've obviously got a monitor decibels um, as well as it powers up um, it does make a hell of a noise when it first starts up but then it cuts cuts down very much similar to the Netgear 2100s um, but obviously I've got to monitor that because I'm in a residential setting. This is not going into a garage or anything like this. It's in one of my spare rooms, my mining room. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye out for future videos. Um, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your comments as always. It's great to uh, to see them in there. And I try to reply as, to as many as I can. Um, you know, if you've got any tips for me, um, please please do put them in there. Um, and keep watching because um, I, lo I love to see the viewer count go up. It's great to know that... Some people are interested in what I do, um, but for now, I'll see you next time.